What's up, YouTube? This is the Take 5 Podcast. Today's topic is top five album openers. All right, what do you got for number five? Well, I'm going to preface this whole thing with I was nowhere near as prepared for this as I would have liked to have been, and that's on me. But uh, So I've been fucking with this for less than an hour, and uh, I ain't going to lie. I feel like I got some bangers, man. So number five, Danzig, Long Way Back From Hell off Lucifuge. Oh, fuck yeah. 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 That song, man, sets the tone of that fucking album. And it's yeah. just, yeah. Um, As an album opener, I like that song. But I almost put with the cane from the first album, which is good, too. But Long Way Back From Hell is a, the better fucking album opener. Yeah. It, it just is, man. So, yeah. That's my number five, man. Danzig, Long Way Back From Hell off of... Yeah. Danzig 2, Lucifuge. Right on. All right, the album opening always set the tone for the whole record. Reminds me of being a kid, buying a new record and rushing home and putting it on the turntable, making sure I played side one first. For number five, I had Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's, what more could be said about it? Yeah. I yes. mean, either you love it or hate it. There's no yep. fuck, especially like, with that song. Love it or hate it. There's no in between. Yeah. I'm not the biggest Sabbath fan, but man, like it's just that. I mean, it starts out, you know, the rain, storm, and shit. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yep. it just, and then just, <laughs> then the song starts. A lot of people think that is where heavy metal started right there, you know? Yep. And, so I had to put that on the list, man. And I think it set the tone for what that band was doing so unique for that time. Oh, for um, sure. I agree with you. I'm not the hugest Sabbath fan, but I'm the one that loves the more rock and rolly stuff they did, like uh like the song Rock and Roll Doctor and uh more st but that Dare I say, I hate it. Do me Sabbath. That's what the world knows them for, you know? And see, and that's what I liked. Was more and, and I like that too. I definitely like that also. But I'm one of the weirdos that likes like technical ecstasy and uh, never say die, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Good pick, though. All right. What you got for number four? Well, my number four, man, I think uh, if you don't have it, you're going to fucking be kicking yourself for not having it, uh, either in your list or an honorable mention, one or the other. Um, and I'm really good, glad, I'm sorry, really glad that I looked this one up, uh, this band. Uh, suicidal Tendencies, You Can't Bring Me Down, Lights, Camera, Revolution. Uh, that same thing that song sets the tone it, it's it, we've referred to a lot of songs as being like anthems i think this song falls in line with that um great album opener man yeah oh yeah for sure cool video too oh yeah fuck yeah 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 All right my number four i'm probably gonna butcher the title but it's Miseria Cantar is Spanish for Sing the Sorrow, from AFI. Okay. You know, what, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. Yes, but I it's would have just, to say it again. Yeah. It's just an intro, but yep. it's so good, man. Yeah. Like I said, I would have to hear again, but yes, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I said it's only like a minute long, whatever. So, I mean, they're, they're singing and stuff, but it's just an intro. But yeah, yep. it was so good. And like on that tour, that's what they would open up with. So it was fucking, you know, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I like it when bands do that. We'll use, a, you know, like whatever. If they have like an intro piece, 
mm-hmm. to an album, you know, I, they, they may incorporate that in like the live as well, you know, even if it's like a pre recorded thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for I sure. Who won bands do shit like that? Yeah. All right, we got for number three. All right. Well, my last three, three, two, one. I went with because these these bands, these albums, these songs, these album openers were um, all in their own way um, bands and albums that set a tone for me in the 80s um, and put me on different musical paths of different stuff that 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 I discovered and learned and ended up falling in love with. Um, so for number three, it, this song, man, just with the drumstick clicks, <laughs> it, album opener. To me, this band, this album is the New York hardcore Bible. Chromags, we gotta know. From the age of quarrel, just hearing those stick clicks and just that same couple chords with the drum fills in between, and then just how it goes into the insanity of that song, man. I fucking love it. It is a great fucking song. Love it. Yeah. yeah I mean, if that's something that doesn't like at a live show, and this is going to sound cliche as fuck to say, but if that doesn't make you want to rage, you don't need to be there. Like, okay. that That's, yeah, man. And the, I've talked about that music video. That is one of my all-time favorite music videos because I think it captures what that band's energy was, mm-hmm. especially in the 80s, especially with that Age of Coral lineup with, you know, John Joseph doing vocals, um, which I'm not team, you know, I, I like Harley stuff too, doing vocals, but yeah, man, we got to know the Chrome Axe. Fuck yeah. All right. My number three, kind of, kind of different from the rest of my list, but I did Blind from Corn. Yeah. Yeah. That opening, you know, is like it when he's like, oh, are you ready? It's all, oh, dude, it just, then it just kicks I in. I'm never gonna bullshit. Never gonna bullshit. do like that first record. I was a when that came out. So yes, you just said it right. If it doesn't get you to want to rage, then you might not be in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's um when it comes on, like you know, you know that album is just gonna be heavy as fuck. You know. Mm-hmm. If you know if you've never heard them before, no, you hear it for the first time, you just know it's like, oh my god, this is gonna be fucking just. And it was different for that yeah, time. Yeah, fuck yeah, it was fucking different. It set the you know they were for another you know style of music that I didn't necessarily get into, but I do not hate on that first Corn album, man. I was about it back then, and I can't bullshit that I wasn't. Well, see, the funny thing is, is like, I didn't know who Corn was. I seen them open for Danzig and Marilyn Manson. Okay. And they opened up with Blind. And just like I said, they, you know, soon as he's like, oh, are you ready? And they kicked in. I'm like, I'm buying a shirt. You know what I mean? I was like, that's yep. simple. Now, not mm-hmm. even a minute in, I'm already, I was already hooked. And then I heard the album and it was just so different. So yep. so it, heavy, absolutely. so angry and shit for you know. Yeah, yep, absolutely, man. I said, I definitely did like that album back then. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's a good pick, man. I wouldn't have expected that from you, but that is a fucking good pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was, I um during that time I was in a lot of that. I mean, I like the Deftones, and you know I was in like a lot of. The, stuff during that time well deftones was different then too yeah i mean you but know, they the were still out around that same thing yeah hadn't really hit yet yeah you know but they were still around that time and considered you know one of those bands but i mean but deftones yeah. kind of had their own style mm-hmm. 
But that new that early um Deftone shit, man, was pretty sick too. Yep. All right. We got for number two. My number two is uh from an album. Even first hearing it, um the album itself is will will always be the tie for first second place of one of my all-time favorite albums it's it's a it's a tie for first place between two particular albums this particular album is one of them and this particular song um was my first introduction to this band but it has its own intro with some very uh <laughs> almost classical acoustic guitar in it and then it just opens up to what i feel this band had created what i still would want from them to this day which we'll never get again i'm going to say that people can argue it comment it whatever you want to do we're never going to get it again I'm talking about metallica with battery off master of puppets yeah. That Master of Puppets and Appetite for Destruction are my two all time favorite albums because of the time they came out. And like I say, the path that those bands put me on to learn and discover other bands from. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, um, Appetite, I mean, Welcome to the Jungle is a great intro. Um, it's just, I'm so sick of that song. I, but yeah, but like when you, you know, 35 years ago, that shit was, mm -hmm. it, man, you know, that, you know, the guitar in the beginning, that's so good. Um, I'll see on Metallica, was it Fight Fire with Fire? Wasn't that the first song on Ride to Lightning? Yes. You see, I, I like, I like that intro. Yeah. I almost, yeah. almost had I that on. Too. I do too, but with Metallica, Someone gave me a cassette copy of Master of Puppets. I knew of the band Metallica. I may have heard the song Fade to Black at that point. This had to have been sometime in like late 86. Go home, listen to it, put that in, hear that, you know, classic, that acoustic guitar. Even played it for my dad. And my but dad, you know, liked the acoustic guitar intro piece. But even hearing Metallica and, and how different, once again, different from other things that I was into at that time, like late 86, mm -hmm. and, and just put me on another path, you know? Um, and, and that song, that's the perfect song to be the opener of that album. And it's called Battery. I mean, yeah. 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 See, my introduction to um Talica was Ride the Lightning. So Okay. So that's always always my favorite one because that was the first one I heard, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. My number two from Lights Camera Revolution, you can't bring me down. Hmm. <laughs> it's funny the whole you should have it on your list. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That is one of the most pissed off angry fucking songs ever written man and yeah. it's like you know and it starts out slow then yep. you know starts it reeling you in yeah starts reeling you in and it has the intro to where he's like what the hell's going on around here you know like yeah oh dude it's yep. just you know like if i'm pissed off about something i'll play that song you know it's like, yeah. it's, dude, it's it's angry but it's also fun you know what i mean it's, yes absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's in the lyrics, you know, I mean, the whole, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, the whole Charles Manson reference, he yeah, he really on your front port, like <laughs> that's brilliant, man. Yeah, no that's shit, fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah, Mike Muir, man, he's he's a great songwriter, man. Yeah, yeah, like man. um, but I remember when that came out, I I didn't like it, um, because at that I've talked about this before. At that time, I wasn't in it, the heavier stuff. But the video when they played on Headbangers Ball, they it was bleeped all the way through, yeah, because I mean, right, all the cussing, right. you know, yeah. and and that made me not like it even more. I'm gonna make a comment once, like, why are you going to show a video if you're just going to like cut it out? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. 
I'd rather have had him just like um, just edit it out instead of actually, you know, putting bleeps over it. You know, I mean, like I thought that ruined it for him. But yeah, but then going back, you know, later, you know, and when I started getting into that stuff and I'm like, man, this is like, that's probably, we should, we should do a top five suicidal songs, but that would be definitely in the list. Yeah. 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 So that's awesome that you did have it in yours also. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Fuck yeah. Yep. All right. So and like I said, one? I came up with this in less than an hour and I, I was like, yeah, this song's got to be. Oh yeah, fucking sure. gotta be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. Am I up for number one? Yep. All right. So my number one is, if anybody pays attention to, you know, where I say, you know, when I really got reeled into music, I say when I was really reeled into it, eighty three, eighty four. There were two particular bands at that time that really did it for me, and uh, this song. This band, this song to this day still get played on the radio, has been used in like ads and shit like that. Um, fun video again opens with a little just a drum fill from Frankie Benali. Rest in peace, Frankie Benali, Kevin Dubrow, Quiet Riot with Metal Health from the album Metal Health. Oh. Yeah, I almost had that. That is a good one. Yeah. 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 And there's people that know this song that don't realize they know this song. Oh, yeah. Y- yeah. Yeah. They may think it's called like Bang Your Head or something, but yeah. 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 They know. 40 songs, 40 years old now. Yeah. And, and they, it still they resonates at, to this Yeah. They day. play it at like sporting events and shit. So, <laughs> right. You know, yeah. Car ads like, and shit or something yeah. like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, so, you know, being 83, you know, a nine year old kid seeing that video, you know, all those Quiet Riot videos on MTV, the other band, all those Twisted Sisters Stay Hungry videos. That was when I knew I was hooked, man. That's what I knew. And it all just started going from there. What Van Halen was doing then with the 1984 album. What Motley Crue was doing then with Shout at the Devil and Theater of Pain. More Theater of Pain for me, starting with. Mm -hmm. What Kiss was doing with Lick It Up and Animal Eyes. What ZZ Top was doing with Eliminator. Like, if it was 83, 84, 85, like, it, it had me hooked. And I say, man, Metal Health, it's 40 years old, and that song still resonates to this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And that's one song that, like, I'm not sick of. As many times I've heard it, it's still a good song. Yeah, I agree. And similar great lyrics in it, you know, you know, hope it annoys you. Great lyrics, you know? Fucking great lyrics in it. Just, oh, yeah. Yeah. And what's cool is that's one song they actually did right and was yeah. good. You know what I mean? Because like most of their hits were covers, you know, so it was good. Yeah, that was, yeah. You know, one they actually wrote. And that is probably their best song. Okay, yeah. One of them for sure. Yeah. N- no doubt. Because that I whole album love... is good, though. Yeah, and I like Critical Condition also. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, like it, it, it it's quiet right you get like you said bang your head you could say that to almost anyone and they'd be like oh yeah okay i know what you're talking about (laughs) yeah yeah like say being a nine-year-old kid and just yeah man seeing the video for it crazy it stuck with me for 40 years yeah for sure all right my number one like i I like intros. We kind of spoke on that a few minutes ago, but um, this was the first record I ever bought. 40 years later, I still remember young Aaron Action listening to this for the first time and thinking, what the fuck is this? Then you have the intro and then goes into Shout Out the Devil. Mm-hmm. My life changed forever. In the beginning. Dude, like, I was like, 
like I remember I was like, man, should I be scared? Or I mean, it was just yeah. I mean, ten right. years old, you know, listen to this shit. And I'm like, you know, then and then open the albums, you know, see the pictures of them. Like, you know, like what the fuck did I just get myself into? You know what I mean? It's like these are yes. like devil yep. worshippers, or you know, or I didn't know what to think, man. But I just know mm-hmm. that. They, Give me the chills, man, when I heard that shit. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome to say it like that. Yeah. 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 And um and it's funny because um we talk off show, we talk a lot about wrestling. Yeah. And um <laughs> Bubba Ray Dudley, he he shot a promo on um on a restaurant once and he did that um in the beginning on some okay. It was fucking hard. You got you got to look it up on YouTube. It was fucking I, hard. Yeah. 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 Send me, like, find a link and send it to me yeah, when we're done. Yeah. It's fucking sweet. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Um, before we do honorable mentions, um, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and comment below. I'm going to make a Spotify playlist for our picks. If you want to go listen, follow me at, on Spotify at Aaron Action. Figure date. If somebody don't know these songs that, that we're talking about, you can go check them out and be easier to find them that way. All right. Um, what do you have for honorable mentions? I came up with a few. Um, so one of them is an album that uh, I like, got hip to different. They changed their style on this. Uh, Death and Roll. It's in tuned. With the song "I Master" from the Wolverine Blues record, yeah, you talked about that song. Before. Yeah, that song opens up, and it's pretty fucking brutal, man. Uh, so that hit my honorable mentions. Um, um, this Tesla song, "Easy Come, Easy Go," off oh, Mechanical yeah. Resonance. Yeah. yeah, that's another good album opener, man. Mm-hmm. Um. Another one, Great White. I just heard this the other, like, maybe yesterday or the day before. Just this week, for sure. Uh, Lady Red Light off Once Bitten. Another great album yeah. opener. Yeah. Um, good. Like I said, I hadn't heard that song in 10, 12 years, maybe. And just mm-hmm. heard it, like I said, earlier this week on That's Sirius. That's a good record. That whole record. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Lady Red Light. uh Man, Junkyard, the first Junkyard record with the song Blues. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that Junkyard record is one of my all-time favorites also. Mm-hmm. Um, and really my last one, man, uh, UFO, the song Natural Thing off uh, No Heavy Petting. Natural Thing. I think that's a one of the top best UFO songs. And that's that yeah. album over there. Yeah, I don't um, listen to them too much. I don't. I don't recognize that song. No. Well, if you heard it, I think you'd probably recognize it, because, like I say, it's one of their well-known hits. Right on. I mean, one of the top five for sure. Rock bottom. Everybody knows that. Too hot to handle. Um, and then I think Natural Things up there with those songs. Yeah. It's funny because while while we're doing this, like man, so many's like come into my head, man. Um, for like honorable mentions, I want to look up. Oh yeah, I'll I'll hear a bunch after the fact. Like I said once again, I was not as prepared for this as I should have been. Um, I mean, I'll say I feel like this is the least prepared I've been for any episode I've ever been for any of these that I've been doing with you for over a year now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I like say, man, I, I feel that that my top five though solid as fuck though. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, my number one in the beginning was um, what made me want to do this episode. Okay, that, and you, you know, said that dinner. Yeah. Yeah, because I was kind of like, in... well, go ahead. I think I have. Uh, a particular song that just popped in my head that reminded me you saying that at dinner that I thought was going to be your number one, but wasn't your number one. So if I'll wait and hear your honorable mentions, and if it's not in there, I'll bring it up. Okay. All right. Um, um, all right. I had 
Let's Go Crazy from Purple Rain. Oh, fuck yes. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Had I prepared for this, I would that I would have that might have even made my top five, if I'm being really honest right that now. That one I love that song in the 80s. Yeah, that um that actually just made uh, my list when I was um taking notes today. So that might have been mm -hmm. on my list too, but that was something I didn't think of till about an hour ago. Yep. Um Cowboys from Hell. I was thinking about that one. I was in uh, honestly, I just ran out of room to write anything else on. Mm -hmm. But that I was a, <laughs> I'm glad you said a thing because I was going to write that down. Yeah. All right. Then I had um, This Time, River Runs Red, Life That Dragon. was it. That yeah. was it. That's the one. That's, yeah. what, I, that's yeah. what I thought you meant when uh, when we were talking at dinner. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah that's. I don't know. It's just like I remember um, we were at a show someplace back in the early '90s, and I remember they were playing it over the speaker. And as soon yeah. as the vocals came in, like the whole bar started singing, and they weren't even playing there that night. But it, you know, it just, I remember it giving me the chills. I was like, man, you know, that's just so good, man. Yep. Yeah, that was I was on, almost on my list too, but like um, I kind of went back and forth on a few of them. But mm -hmm. then here's one you kind of mentioned, um, but I did Twist of Cain. Okay, yeah, Nancy, I right? get why. Yeah, that uh, I love that guitar. I love Me that too. And that song. Me too, but like I'll stick behind my statement where I think "Long Way Back from Hell" yeah. is the better album opener. I'm yeah. not even saying necessarily a better song. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that really oh, sets the tone for that that album. It's got a little build up to it. Um, yeah. That's so yeah. But I totally agree with Twist Kane because I originally when I went through my music list and I saw Danzig, I went all oh, Twist Kane. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked at Lucy Fuge, I went, oh, hold the fuck on, uh, long way back from Hell's the the, the better opener. Yeah, but, yeah. So. We got we got both of them in there, so yeah, yeah, they're, they're both great. Yeah. Then I had um, here's one I might kind of surprise you. Welcome to Planet Motherfucker, White Zombie. Yeah. La Sexer, yes. La Sexeristo or whatever the fuck you call it. Yeah. Um, La Sexeristo. <laughs> but yeah, like it. Um, I love the intro to that. Yeah. Yep. Then I had um. String through wounding AFI black cells in the sunset. Okay, I I like that album, but I'd have to hear it again. Yeah, that song. They they do. I think every album they pretty much had like a little intro. Um. Then here's one we'll talk about more here in a little bit. But I had night songs. Yeah. Yep. But that was beginning. That's cool. Okay. Then here's I did something a little bit different. I got some that I think should have been opening track. Okay. Yeah. See, that'd be a whole nother list for me. Yeah. Would you, you, what do you want to just wait and do that then? Do a do a whole episode on that or however you want to do it. Cause I could tell you right now one for sure that I think should have been the fucking album opener. Um, and we already kind of br brought up the song and the album is, uh, it's so easy. Should have been the fucking album opener for Appetite for Destruction. Yeah, should one hundred percent should yeah, have been. Probably, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I had um, Center of Eternity off of Bark at the Moon. Okay, yeah. Which is like um, first song on side two. But then I had um, it's funny because Ozzy and Sabbath had a lot, but Crazy Train or Mister Crowley off of Blizzard of Oz. Mm hmm. Like, I don't know was the opening track, and I think one of these should have been. Then here's one. I refuse to listen to this. Um, like, I listened to this album backwards, from side two to side one, because there's no way this song shouldn't have been opening track. Fucking Number of the Beast. Oh, Maiden, yeah. That should have yeah. been the opening track. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it just, with, with yeah. the intro on there, I mean, that's... 
And then I then I thought maybe like um punishment from Biohazard would have been a good opening track. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's right back there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> right behind you. Yep. <laughs> I mean that album was great, but um but I even kind of think that like Circus of Power, I kind of think Call of the Wild should have been the opening track. You agree with that one? I see why you say it, but no, that, I don't. Um, I think the opener for that album, there's a couple songs. Heart Attack, there's something about that guitar riff for Heart Attack and how it just comes in with the bass drum. Um, I think that's one of the first songs that they may have even come up with as a band. The song Heart Attack, I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Um also, maybe uh, Machine. I think Machine would have been a good opener for that album. Um, Motor's good. Yeah. Motor's good. But I, I agree. I think there are other songs that could have been a better opener for the yeah. album. Yeah. I, Motor I, is I totally a great agree. song. Yeah. Motor yeah. is a great song. But like, and, and once again, like you said, like the um, opening track kind of sets the tone for the record. Right. And even though it's a great record, I do think that, yeah, like, um, they should have switched it up a little bit. And, yeah, the fact that, you know, Call of, Wild, Call of the Wild was the first video, I could see why that could, you know, be the album opener, too. Yeah, you uh, know? But, man, I just yeah. love that opening guitar, man. Well, another one, too, if we're going to say that, Rockin' is my business. Yeah. You should have opened up, you know, nobody said it was easy. Yeah. Or 75 again. Mm -hmm. Should have opened up that album. Um, same thing. There's a couple other songs that I think should have could have been the better opener of that. And he, I've always said, you know, that I think that's the most underrated rock and roll record in fucking music history. Yeah. And it's become one of my favorites. Um, God damn, I could only imagine had I really got into that band like back in 91. Yeah. 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 See, yeah, we could still do a whole episode of this. We yeah. absolutely still could, man. Yeah. Well, because um, the thing is, is what what made me think of that was when I was doing this list, and you know, because like I said, Number of the Beast, when I had it on vinyl, I would listen to side two first. So in my mind, yeah. that was the opening track. But when okay. I was going to go do research, I'm like, wait a minute, that's like side two. Yep. Well, so here like, I'll say this. I'll even go as far to say this. If it, I I'm not disagreeing about that song being the album opener. Mm -hmm. It could have also been the final song on the album. Yep. Yeah, I, it could I have gone either way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason I say number of the beats is because um, once again I'm going back to in the beginning where it has like the little talking intro, the little narration mm -hmm. thing. So. Yeah. So I'm basing everything on that. So that's why I said um, Number of the Beast should have been that way, just because I think it's a cool way to open it out. Because, like, um, then another one was Man of War uh, Defender. Yeah, I, I'm i not that versed in Man of War. But, I mean, like, I think yeah, that yeah. should have been an opening. You know what I mean? Because it has okay. um, I don't, I don't know that one, man. So that one I can't really. Obviously, I know Man of War. I've even yeah. seen them. Uh, but I just know like a handful of their songs. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was going through this list. I was like, man, like, you know, I, songs that I thought was number one uh, or the was opening track and it was, I'm like, well, fuck. yeah, that's why I had yep. to make a like little side thing saying, I think these should have, should have been, but yeah, if you want, we'll, um, we'll do, we'll do that one and I'll go through some more. Um, yeah. Oh, we could come up with a lot more. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. All right. Album of the Week. Released on June 9th, 1986 on Mercury Records. Lead off single was Shake Me, but Nobody's Fool was the breakthrough single. Then the third single was Somebody Save Me. This album reached number three in the Billboard 200 and sold over three million records in the U.S. Cinderella, Night Songs. Yep. And you just said my favorite song from it is Somebody Save Me. 
Yeah, that's a good one. I like um, Back Home Again. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, some of these songs are heavy, like Hell on yeah. Wheels. Hell on Wheels. Um, Once Around Night the song. Ride. It's been kind of real moody. It's that, I think it's a good... I think it sets a good tone for that album. It's mm -hmm. slower, moodier, mm -hmm. and then you write into Shake Me, which is upbeat. And yeah, um, Nothing for Nothing, I already said, right? Uh, Somebody Save Me is my favorite song from that album. But another one, fucking Push, Push. Push, Push, yep. yeah. Great song. Yeah. Yeah, Once Around the Ride. Yeah. I remember they... um. Once no uh, nobody's fool came out, they blew up, man. They went on tour with mm -hmm. Bon Jovi, and they they became like they were yeah, massive was, at the time. Yeah, and I remember seeing the video for "Shake Me" pretty early on. Yeah, um, um, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say there was a um, daily show on MTV called Hard Thirty, which is thirty minutes long. Then it went to Hard Sixty, um, which yeah. is an hour long. But they would play a lot of the new glam or poppier side of hard rock. Compared to Headbangers Ball, like um, you wouldn't see, you wouldn't see like Anthrax or something on there, but you'd see yeah. more like you know, Poisons or Stage Dolls or you know the more melodic stuff. And um, I remember seeing the video for Shake Me for the first time. The original version um, was a little bit longer. You know, they ended up editing it out, but the girl's in bed and her steps, her sisters, yeah. Step sisters yeah. come in and um they're like, Oh, we're going to see Cinderella and Yeah. You and gotta stay not. home. Yeah, you're yeah. not. Yeah. And then um yeah. she's staring at the um at the Cinderella poster, then they come to life, the next thing you know, she's at the show, and then um yeah. then the video, she's getting in the limo with them while they're still waiting outside and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool. But then nobody's Waving fool. Them, yeah. yeah, no but then nobody's fool was almost kind of a continuation, wasn't it? If I remember right, yeah, it had the same characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it was it was so good. But I, I remember. Two, um, go ahead. Well, I was going to say also, and I think you'll agree. Um, their sa Cinderella sound overall changed after that album. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, I mean, so um, this album, as far as a glam album or a glam band. I said, I've always been very picky about those bands who sound, but this, that first Cinderella, it definitely, I was all about it. Still am. Still yeah. listen to it to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember, you know, because Shake Me was the first song I heard. Cause I think it was, it was um, the single was released before the album. And right. it's usually I'm what they do. That's how they promote it. But I remember, um, that song's kind of, you know, poppy or whatever. But then when I remember putting out them on, I was like, man, this is like pretty heavy for, you know, for this genre. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, compared to, you know, even like Def Leppard and shit, you know what I mean? Like they, I thought the album was really, it was pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and man. Of course, yeah. They had the ballad, you know. Why? Well, I, I yeah. have, um, like a demo version of the ballad of Nobody's Fool, and it's even better. It's like shitty quality okay. demo, but I, yeah, I have to let you check it out. It's pretty sweet. Well, I'm pretty sure there's a Shake Me was the song that like helped get them signed. I mean, that's happened for a few bands where there was a particular song that they were doing prior to that kind of led to, I know the whole involvement with Bon Jovi in Mercury Records had something to do with it also, but I'm pretty sure there's even a, ver a video, another video, like a live video version of Shake Me, even like with the original band. I don't, I don't even think Jeff Labar's in it. Um, yeah. He's I think there. the dude from Britney Fox was still in it and the, whoever the, the drummer, um, cause it wasn't Freddie Curry. Um, was well, it's funny? Cause I, um, I don't, I don't think he was even on any albums till like later. Like I know he wasn't on the first one, mm -hmm. um, but he he was like the touring drummer. Then I think was it in like um, Cozy Powell played on Long Cold Winter. I think. I think a few different people played on it. Um, 
Cozy Powell may have played some. I want to say even uh, dude, I love my God, man, Denny Carmasi, who was in Montrose, who I love, one of my all time favorite drummers. But yeah, his fucking name was escaping me there for being forty nine years old. Um, I think he played on some of. Long cold wind. I'm not 100. percent And even I think Heartbreak Station. I think it was to a point, like he said, where F- Freddie Curry didn't. Yeah. I mean, even play on uh, Long Cold Winter, or, or definitely not all of it. And yeah. I, and I don't think he played on all of Heartbreak Station either. Yeah. I, but I I'm not 100 percent on that. Yeah. I, I don't Heartbreak think he Station, played on. Yeah, I don't think he played on um, full album until like um, still climbing. Which okay. is, I don't understand because he was like the, um, he was a touring drummer, but I mean, but he's like he's played in other bands. I mean, he's like an established drummer. I think he like he's still you know he writes songs for people. You know, what I mean, I just not never understood why he never played on the records, but he always performed live. And he's the yeah. face. You no, know, he was the yeah. He was even. I mean, I get why at least for night songs. Yeah, that he came in before. after it was yeah. recorded. I mean, his picture was on the album cover, but uh, yeah. similar, you know, like Steve Riley didn't play on the first L.A. Guns album, mm-hmm. um, but his picture was on it, you know, but yet he played on the next. Yeah. Well, see, the first one albums. makes sense because yeah. like, cause it was, um, they had different members before before they were mm-hmm. signed. They broke the songs, but yeah. Well, right. And, and even those records were recorded yeah. with the different drummers before those yeah. dudes. Yeah. But it's weird, like how why they would do Long Cold Winter without yeah, him when he was already right. part of the band, you know? Which, yeah, I don't know. I never, like, I never understood that. Yep. I don't know. Maybe we get Freddie Curry on here to talk about it. That would be sweet. Yeah, I mean, because you know, every time I've seen him, he's been the drummer. It's like every video they've ever had, he was the drummer. You know, like every album cover mm-hmm. he was on, he was the drummer. But then he didn't play in the records. It's just, I just, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know either. Right on. Yeah. Anything else on Cinderella? No, man. Um, other, I mean, really, that's the only, I like songs on Long Cold Winter. I know a couple of the songs from Heartbreak Station. There were the videos, but. Night Songs is really the only album I listen to of Cinderella's. Yeah. Um, that's I, not to say that if I started diving into some of their other stuff that I wouldn't like it. I'm not saying that. Um, but I said I had that cassette, you know, back in 86, because it came out, what, like early summer of 86? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I probably end up having it like at the end of summer or, you know, maybe early fall. Um, Because I remember a a dude that lived across the street, we were talking about the Shake Me video. And I don't want to say he gave me that cassette, because that dude had, he gave me a few cassettes. One of them was the White Snake Love Hunter uh, that was like an import. But I don't think he gave me uh, Night Songs, but I know he and I had talked about that video. He loved Van Halen. Um, I had a crush on his sister. Actually, his sister was the first girls boobs i ever saw so um <laughs> that's why yeah, i like it yeah uh so yeah man that's that that's really the whole album of cinderella's that i that i listen to yeah. see like i liked all their stuff i mean that's by far the best record with that being said my favorite cinderella song ever is coming home off of long oh, yeah I get it, and I like that song too. Yeah, man, but I really, yeah. I had Long Cold Winter on cassette. I did have it, but I know I didn't listen to it nowhere near as much as I did Night Songs. Now, but see, now since we're um, talking about that, I just thought of something. Bad Seamstress Blues. Oh and, yeah, um, Long Cold Winter. Yeah, good, good opening. I should have yes. had that as honorable mention. Um, yeah, going into well, falling I- part of the seams. Yeah, um, another one for me, honorable mention, album opener, uh, Anthrax, Among the Living, Among the one oh, Among the Living. To me, that's another great album opener. Got an intro, kind of similar to like how the 
Chrome Ag's We Gotta Know, where it's got its own musical intro. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's another honorable, the Anthrax Among the Living. Um, yeah, man. All good shit. All good shit. Fuck yeah. Yeah. All right, right on. Is that it? Yeah, yeah man, I gotta get my ass to bed. <laughs> that Mexican food. <laughs> Hit me with the corona, man. <laughs> but yeah, but we go every week. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's our spot. Hell yeah. All right, right yeah. on, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, man. All right. Thanks for Five watching. Five and out. Five and out. <laughs>